whatever I can. Okay, so here's a here's a more theoretical question about that uh, that material, the, the same material here. So I'm going to be very brief here and just write v sub beta. That means I have a vector space with a basis beta, right? Uh, and W is another vector space with a given basis gamma. So let's just say, let these things be given. Okay. And let T go from V to W. So as usual, we have a linear transformation between V and W with those bases established. Okay. And they are ordered bases. Right. Unless I say otherwise. Okay. So prove the following. If... The matrix representation of T, beta to gamma, contains a column of zeros. Suppose we do the matrix transformation and we get a column of zeros. Uh, then T is not one to one. So if you were to work out the matrix representation, and if you've got a column of zeros, then T is not one to one. Okay. I guess, um, well, you need to re this forces you to really think about how that matrix works, how the matrix is constructed, right? You did this in the homework for Friday, right? You did all, the, all these matrix representations. You were filling out the columns. What would it mean if you filled out a column of zeros? Doesn't that mean that it maps one of the bases to the zero vector in W? And would also map? Actually, stop right there. If I map one of my basis vectors to zero, doesn't that mean I'm killing a non-zero vector? Right. So the basis vectors are not zero. I'm killing some vector. And that means your null space is not true. So this just means the null space is not just zero. Right? There's something other than the zero vector that gets transformed to zero. Okay, so Boris got the right idea. Did you have a question? No, I was going to say it means the null space is not true. Exactly. Basically, these are the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, so we just basically want to argue, or we just need to write down a little text here. This is a very short, again, less than half a page, to write down an explanation of the fact that there would be something that's not in, something non-zero that is in the null space. So, just to make it a little, I'm going to be semi-formal with it, and write a proof that, that you wouldn't probably need to make it quite this fancy, but I'm just going to try and be as rigorous as I can. So let's suppose that it's the jth column of this matrix that is all zeros. Okay? So assume, we can just sort of say without loss of generality if we want, but I'm just going to say assume the jth column of this matrix representation from beta to gamma is all zeros. Okay. Um, then... What does that mean? That means that um, if Vj is the jth vector in beta, then, so how do we, let's remind ourselves, how do we construct this matrix again? Let's see, we transform the basis vectors and we slap the results into the columns as almost like um, those are the coefficients of the result. So then, basically, then, uh, if we take T of Vj, right, we, if we transform that basis vector, um, it has coefficients with respect to gamma that are all zero, right? You know, if it would help you, maybe I should have done this. You, you could have just written out beta is like V1 through Vn, and gamma is like W1 through Wm, 
we've used that notation before, then it's a little easier to just express it. But the idea is that T of Vj, if I just want to even put an equation down, is like 0 times W1 plus 0 times W2 plus da 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 plus 0 times Wm, where, I'll just say that here, gamma is W1 through Wm, like that. So um, if I just define, define it that way, then, <laughs> and so it doesn't, doesn't even matter what these vectors actually are. The point is they're all getting multiplied by 0 and added together, so my final answer is just going to be 0. Okay, so to finish the proof over here really quickly, Vj, therefore, is in n of t. So n of t is not 0, the null space is not 0, and so t is not 1 to 1. Uh, I've done this before, you might see this tom uh, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? It is tomorrow. <laughs> uh, uh, I like these questions where I give you four choices. It's either one property, the other property, or both, or neither. And I tend to do that with um, one transformations. So I can give you a transformation and say, is it one to one? Is it on to? Is it both? Or is it neither? S circle whichever one and show me, show me how you can conclude that. I can do the same thing with a set of vectors with respect to being a basis. Linearly independent, spans the space, both or neither, right? So th those sorts of things um, can, can come up a, a lot. Uh, a lot of those are just computational things. Remember that you can use Annan's consequences to draw negative conclusions really quickly, right? Um, and you can use the rank nullity theorem to draw negative conclusions really quickly, right? What I mean by that is if I have a transformation from R8 to R6, for example, kind of going back to what we were doing earlier, I, I already know that this can't be one-to-one. -one. I, I haven't even written down the transformation. I just know it can't be one-to-one. -one. Why? Well, because, or you want to tell me? Oh, well, that's because the nullity ha has to be two, which means it's not trivial. Well, the nullity has to be not necessarily oh, greater two. Or equal to two. Right, the rank is at most six, so the nullity has to be at least two, which means t is not one to one. Okay, so the rank nullity theorem. So these, the rank nullity theorem is used for quick negative justifications on the one to one onto issue. The Annan's consequences are used for quick negative justifications on. Uh, whether something can be linearly independent or spans span a space, but give you a set of vectors, right? Um, it's hard to draw positive conclusions, though, quickly. Now, you, you generally, you have to do some work to, to really show that. But for negative conclusions, it, it's not so bad. So let me give you an example where we want to draw some positive conclusions. That takes a little bit, a bit of work. Okay, here we go. So prove, this is number four. Prove, notice of quite a few proofs. When I teach 250B, it's sort of like 80, 85% computations and 15 or 20% proofs. Here, in this class, you're going to find it to be quite a bit more balanced. And I'm definitely focusing more on proofs in the review session because the computational stuff, I think you guys know and you can practice it as much as you want. Okay. So, um, prove the following. If, actually, this is going to be if and only if here. Um, the set of UVW is a basis for V if and only if the set of U plus V, U plus W, V plus W is a basis for V. We have to go both directions here, if and only if. Uh, 
Um, they will be somewhat similar, okay? Um, they go both ways, but not quite the same. So why don't we go forward first, then left of a better idea. Um, By the way, in something like this, if, if I wanted to use this as an exam question, I might give you a choice. You know, I, I'm not interested in watching you repeat the same kind of thing multiple times. I might give you a choice and say prove whichever way you want, not make you do both. Um, you know, so when I'm giving you these questions that, where I give you choices, it's probably because they're kind of redundant. But sometimes people, the trouble with this stuff, as you guys well know, is that once you understand it, it's like, oh, of course, right? <laughs> It's like really clear, but while you're in the fog and in the dark, it's like, I have no idea. It's the way math is, right? Um, and so I try to help you get past that problem by giving you some choices. Like maybe you're in the dark on this thing, but the light bulb goes off on something else. Um, so don't be surprised if I do that. I have not written the test yet, by the way. Um, I always do it at the last minute because I, <laughs> I don't like to come to the review session sort of already knowing what I'm going to ask you about. So. Um, that way I can just say whatever I want right now. Um, <laughs> so let's just prove the forward direction. So I'm going to assume UVW is a basis. And then uh, we need to show, be sure if you're going to write a proof with this format, you must write we need to show like that or something because otherwise you're asking me to read your mind about what you're doing and I don't want to do that. So uh, prove that that is a basis for V. V is just some vector space, of course. Okay. Um, so any thoughts on how I should proceed with that? Well, we just have to prove, we have to prove that that's a lie. Okay, good. So this set of vectors, um, in order to be a basis, it has to be two things, we're remembering from chapter one, linearly independent, and it has to span the space. Joseph? Uh, I was going to say we already know it's out I because from the review packet. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, Isn't we proved that if that set is I out I, then the plus set is going to be out I think so it was a different set, wasn't it? Sense. It's exactly so the same set? So we have to show oh, that. Oh, it is. But you can keep going because I don't understand that. I don't know. Okay. We keep going inside of the other Okay, I'll keep going. Bora? We don't have to show both because it has the right number of elements. Okay, good. I was hoping somebody would notice that. This is three dimensional already. So therefore, this is three dimensional. I have three vectors. It's the right number of vectors. I already know that up front. So do you guys remember that fact? If I give you the number of vectors, if I know the dimension in advance, which I do, so let's just say no dimension of V equals 3. Since I know the dimension of V in advance, I know that it equals 3. So, and here's three vectors. So this was a also kind of, um, and well, yeah, and its consequences kind of thing, that basically if I check linear independence, then the vectors also automatically have to span the space. So. Um, because a linearly independent set can be extended to a basis. Let me just remind you that. So if it's not a basis yet, if I, had, if I prove that these three, three things are linearly independent and they're not a basis, then that would mean that somehow I could extend it to a larger set that was a basis, right? Which would then mean that the dimension would be that larger number, which would be too large because it's only